What's up guys, my name is Brandon and just one day after dropping the final version of iOS 10.2.1, Apple drops the very first beta of iOS 10.3 to registered developers. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys 13 new features in iOS 10.3 and also a small jailbreak update at the very end. So first off, you can see the size of this update. It's about two gigabytes, which is pretty large. So a lot of us really just expected to see some type of dark mode or theater mode, you know, based on the leaks and rumors we talked about a couple weeks back. So we're gonna see if that exists in a few minutes, but first we're gonna take a look at the build number in iOS 10.3 beta one. As you can see there, it's 14E5230E, e, which is pretty long. It's a lot longer than those uh, build numbers and betas 10.2 and 10.2.1. So it's pretty long, which uh, pretty much leads us to believe that there's gonna be quite a few betas with this version. All right, so let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into the new features and changes in iOS 10.3. All right, so the very first feature is one that you're gonna notice right away, and that is 10.3 is a lot more fluid and smooth than iOS 10.2.1. Now the benchmarks are the same, but the home button animation glitch has been fixed. Scrolling through long messages and web page is just a lot smoother now. I tested this earlier extensively. The opening and closing animations just feel and look a lot better. So you can see if we open up something and close it, Everything just looks and feels a lot better and smoother than it did in iOS 10.2.1, the final release. And this fluidity and smoothness is partly due to feature number two, which is Apple's file system. So this is quote, a next generation file system designed to increase data integrity and security across all iOS, tvOS, macOS, and watchOS platforms. So this one may be a little bit hard to grasp, but basically it's a new file system and it's not only gonna speed up our devices a little bit, but it will also help secure our data data better. And this was talked about at WWDC last year, and it's actually a little bit surprising to see it arrive so quickly. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit more once I fully understand its possibilities, you know, in later videos and once I fully grasp, you know, what this file system is capable of. But as for now, I just want to let you guys know that that has been implemented in iOS 10.3. Next up is find my AirPods. So this will allow you to locate your AirPods just like you would any of your other Apple devices that can now be located, as you can see here in the native find my iPhone application and you can see here that it is the old location from 49 minutes ago they went offline about 49 minutes ago and if I go ahead and click on actions you can see you can actually play a sound through the headphones if I go ahead and click on that you can hear it making a small little sound I'm not sure if you can hear that but they do play a small little sound you can see you can mute the left or the right AirPod. So this is a really awesome feature for those with AirPods, but one thing you need to keep in mind is that these do rely on Bluetooth, so it'll only work within about a five meter radius of your device. All right, so moving on to the fourth feature, you can see that if we go back to settings and go all the way up to the top, we have a whole new section here that comes in the very top of these settings that contains all of your iCloud and Apple ID information. And before you even go into this and check out what's inside, how cool is this that it's at the top of your settings? It almost makes it feel, you know, it, it makes it even feel more like it's your device. It's really cool. So let's go ahead and click on this. And you can see there are all kinds of things here. I'm gonna have to blur some stuff because this is a lot of personal information. But you can see names, numbers, and email, and it will show you all of the names, phone numbers, and emails of the devices linked to your Apple ID. So as you can see here, I have all these. It shows birthday, announcement, you can have all these toggles. We have password and security, payment and shipping, iCloud, and you can see all of the devices here connected to your Apple ID. So this is a really awesome section and it really just makes everything simple to locate. It's all in one section instead of scattered around in settings and it's at the very top of the settings application. So I really, really like this feature. So another new feature comes in the iTunes and App Store settings here inside of the settings application. So as you can see at the bottom, we have a brand new toggle for in-app ratings and reviews. And you can read below, it says help developers and other users know what you think by letting apps ask for product feedback. So you can turn this on or off for all applications. So I'm actually gonna turn this off because I hate when apps ask me all the time if I enjoy the app, rate it five stars. So this is a great way so that you don't actually get apps asking you to rate their app all the time. So really cool that Apple included this in 10.3. And going back to the home screen and then over to the widgets, if we go down and click edit, and if we add a new widget, you can see we have 
podcast there. So we now have the option to add a podcast widget, which we did not have in 10.2.1. Next up is reduced motion for Safari. So motion is now integrated into Safari in iOS 10.3, and it can be enabled or disabled based on your preference in the main accessibility setting for reduced motion. It includes Safari now. So basically Safari now supports a new media query, which will allow web designers and web developers to provide alternate page styles for those of us who are sensitive to large areas of motion and opt in to reduce motion in our accessibility settings. Next up is integrated calling. So if you go to the phone settings, you can now make calls on other devices even when they aren't nearby. So I can actually test this since I have an inactive SIM, but if you have an active SIM and if you're on Verizon, I know for sure Verizon is one of the ones that are working. It may vary based on your carrier, but you can now do integrated calling and call on other devices even when they aren't nearby. So in our privacy settings, we can scroll all the way down now and we can see that we have an analytics tab here and this is actually used to be called diagnostics and usage. So it now got renamed to analytics, which is a lot more fitting in my opinion. The next feature comes in the maps application. You can now 3D touch on the weather icon in the bottom right of the maps uh, application to get an hourly forecast. If I go ahead and 3D touch you could see that I get an hourly forecast there. You could not previously even 3D touch on the weather icon down there in the bottom right. So the 11th feature is that Siri has now learned cricket scores from the Indian Premier League and International Cricket Council. So this is great for my Indian viewers and I even tested it out right here. As you can see, here are some scores from the Indian Premier League. So in the cellular settings, you have a new toggle down here for iCloud Drive. So it says when not connected to Wi-Fi, use cellular network to transfer documents and data in iCloud Drive. And this is definitely something you wanna pay attention to if you use iCloud Drive because this could cost a lot of people you you know, a lot of money if they use iCloud Drive and aren't always on Wi-Fi, you know, and they're on their cellular network, sending and receiving all of this data from iCloud Drive that could easily put them over their limit for the month, you know, and cost them a lot of money. So make sure to pay attention to this setting here in the cellular settings. And the final feature is CarPlay improvements, namely iOS 10.3 will give you shortcuts for launching recently used applications. And then you also have the Maps application, which will highlight electric vehicle charging stations for all you Tesla owners out there on the map itself. So those are 13 new features in iOS 10.3 beta one. I'm sure there are many more and even more that will be added in later betas, but that's what I have for now. And a lot of you are probably like, where is dark mode? Where's theater mode? And unfortunately, we just didn't get that. You know, the rumors weren't true. So unfortunately, we have no dark mode as of right now on iOS. Now let's briefly, briefly talk about the iOS 10 Yalu jailbreak. So this iOS 10.3 beta release doesn't really impact the 10.2 signing period at all because that was already affected when iOS 10.2.1 dropped to the public. Because if you remember on my spreadsheet, it's usually seven days after the next version gets released, not necessarily a beta, just a public release. Now, if you plan on updating to iOS 10.2, you need to do so sometime this week or this weekend before the signing window closes. There hasn't really been any major development as of right now, but I do have a jailbreak update video coming later on this week which will touch on a few details that a lot of you guys have been left wondering about. So there you have it guys. Those are 13 new features and changes in iOS 10.3 beta one. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you soon.